Have you ever wondered how brands get this? The secret is Blender. Let's start by opening up Blender. You can go ahead and delete all this. We don't need it. We're gonna go ahead and go to our text tool. Go ahead, go to the front view. We're gonna type in whatever you wanted to say. I'm just typing Chrome today. Then you're gonna go and change the font. This is the font that I'm using for today. I'm gonna zoom in, that looks good. Let's just go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so that we can see it and mess with it a little bit. We're gonna extrude it a little bit. Play with the depth. You can adjust this as much as you want. Maybe you want a lot of it, maybe you want a little bit. It's really up to you. Go ahead and set your origin to center of mass volume. We're gonna do the location X to zero, Y, and then we're gonna turn the rotation X to 90 so that way it's centered. And then we're gonna convert it to a mesh. This is a safe checkpoint, so go ahead and back up your project. Next, open up modifiers, go to remesh, and you're gonna go to smooth and set it to 10. That should work just fine. We're gonna go ahead and hit apply. If you zoom in, this looks really good now. I really like how this looks. I'm just gonna play with the size a little bit and get it to where I want it to be. That looks good right there. Next, we're gonna go to sculpt mode and we're gonna go to the smooth tool. Turn up the radius, turn down the strength, and we're just gonna smooth this out and get it to a place where we like it. Don't forget to do the back. That looks pretty good right there. We're gonna go back to object. Next, we're gonna open up another window and we're gonna add some effects to this. Next, we're gonna change our view to rendered view. That way we can see what it's gonna look like. We're gonna go to, over to shader editor, hit end to clear. We're gonna make a new material. And then we're gonna choose our background. You wanna choose a background that has a lot of contrast and color. That way it'll show up better on your reflective surface or your 3D object. This is an image that I found on Unsplash. I can link it down below. Let's go ahead and turn up the metallic. That way it reflects how we want it to. And then we're gonna play with the roughness. We're gonna look for a noise texture. We're gonna go ahead and connect the factor to the roughness. Next, we're gonna add a color ramp. This is gonna control how our roughness looks. Let's just go ahead and boost the blacks and kind of bring some contrast. We're also gonna play with the scale just to get some more of that roughness to be visible. You can tweak these settings to how you like or you can just copy mine. Uh, I'm gonna just keep tweaking it till it gets to a place I like it. Maybe turn up that metallic all the way. This is starting to look good, reflective, and a little dirty. If you hit Control T, you can activate Node Wrangler and you'll just get some more uh, settings and some more features just to get it exactly how you want it to. Let's go back to our world settings, hit Control T, and play with the Node Wrangler on the background right here, just so that we can get the reflections exactly how we want them to this background will be visible so just go crazy get it exactly how you want it to look for the best result once it's in a place that we like it we're going to go ahead and add a camera just drag it into the place where you want it to be i want mine to be perfectly head on for the uh finished result that we're looking for this looks good right here go over to your settings and just hit film and hit transparent that way you don't see that background next let's add in the background that we actually want hit shift a and go to image as plane i'm using elements from my visual pack called mercy that is available right now click the link in the description to purchase select your background and then adjust it to the place where you want it to be let's go ahead and move it back a little bit and then we're going to scale it up that way it just fills the whole camera frame that looks good right there. We're gonna go over to the object settings for the plane. I'm just gonna mess with the offset and just get it so that the colors look a little similar to the graphic that we have in front of it. You can adjust this however you want to. Next, let's add a light. We're gonna go with area. I'm going to rotate mine up because I want it to shine from the bottom. Just move it down a little bit gonna scale it up that way it's just covering the entire thing and turn the power up to a hundred now we have this nice glow coming from the bottom I'm gonna do the same thing again we're gonna go to light area I'm going to uh, not delete it but I'm going to rotate it and then move it up a little bit that way it's shining behind it scale it up change the power to a hundred and then I'm just gonna slightly tilt it down that way it's shining a little bit from behind it and pointing down on it. That looks good right there. Now that you have finished your logo, let's go ahead and bring it to life. 
Let's start off by animating our Chrome text. I'm gonna go over to Object. I'm gonna place a keyframe at the beginning of my clip. Go over to the end of where I want the animation to finish. Place some more keyframes because I want it to end like that. I'm going to go back to the beginning and I'm just gonna kind of play with this. I'm gonna maybe have it start facing up. Maybe turn it to the side a little bit. Kind of like it's revealing itself to the camera. Go ahead and place my other keyframes. Uh, let's test see what this looks like. Okay, that looks good. Nice, cool little animation. I'm just gonna play with the position a little bit just because I want it to stay somewhat centered when we have the uh, animation. Uh, just play with it a little bit. Don't forget to hit that keyframe. And now I wanna hit play. It looks a lot better and we just animated our text now I want to animate the camera I'm going to go ahead and select it go over to object I'm going to um, hit the Y location and then we're gonna just play with the rotation a little bit too let's zoom in all the way or as much as we can I just want to rotate it I think 40 degrees is good so now when we hit play the camera is rotating and it's moving away from our subject just makes it look really interesting just keep playing with it a little bit like that looks pretty good right there nice and smooth now the only thing that is messed up is our background it doesn't fit all the way so I'm just gonna go ahead and make some keyframes and just make it fill the whole frame the whole time I'm actually gonna have it start off really big and by the time you get to the end, have it uh, shrink a little bit. You won't notice it on camera, but it'll help it uh, fill the frame the entire time. So go ahead and just play with the keyframes. Okay, uh, that looks good. Basically, just keep messing with this until you get it to a place where you like it. I'm just gonna speed through this. But once you get to a place that you like it, it should look like this. Nice and smooth, nice and crisp. And there you go, you just have your first animation. Let's add effects. So go ahead and render your image real quick. That way we have a base to work off of. We're gonna go to Compositor, select Use Nodes, and then we're gonna make sure we have our backdrop on. And in order to see it, we're gonna hit Viewer, pull out the Viewer node, connect the image over to the Viewer node, and hit Fit. I'm just gonna move it around that way I can see it. Now we're gonna add some effects to this. We want it to glow, so we're gonna type in glare. And what that's gonna do is give it a nice little glow effect and just play with the settings and get it to a place where you like it. You can copy mine if you want to. I don't want mine to be super harsh. I'm just gonna make it pretty soft. Make sure you select bloom just to get some natural glow. That looks really good. Go ahead and connect everything back to the compositor node. And then we're gonna go over and hit render image again. And now we can see our effect. Now let's get our export settings ready. You can go ahead and play with the frame rate, whatever you want it to be. I'm just going to uh, do mine at 24 frames per second. Go ahead and name your video. And then we're gonna change it to 16 bit. We're gonna do it as a PNG. That way we can put it together as a sequence in Premiere Pro or wherever you edit in. And then just play with your resolution. I'm doing mine at 4K. Hit render animation and once you're done, everything should look like this. Well, that's it for today. Go ahead and like and subscribe and comment and let me know what you want me to cover next. And I'll see you guys in the next one.